Hey guys, Ivan here, and in today's video we're gonna do something very, very, I wouldn't go as far as to say extremely interesting. So Tyler Mannion did a review of the Classic Physique Division, and what he said in this video kind of blew my mind, honestly. It was extremely close between Mike Sommerfeld and Chris Bumstead had this year's Mr. Olympia, Mike could have easily won the show and beat Chris Bumstead at his last Mr. Olympia. I mean, I knew some judges gave it to Mike, it wasn't a clear win, but based on Tyler Mannion, man, Chris was lucky, he won it by a hair. Now again, even though it is Tyler Mannion who judged the show, who is the vice president of the IFBB, we don't have to agree with everything he says, you know, these guys are wrong sometimes. And I agreed with like almost everything when it came to the open division, but as far as classic physique, I don't know guys, I don't know, he said some really controversial things, you're gonna hear in a second, I don't agree with some of them. So let me show you, let's go pose for pose, first pose is gonna be front double bicep, let's hear what Tyler has to say. Chris always has a very, very strong front double bicep. His legs, his quads specifically, were just a little bit downsized from his best. Now we go over to Mike. He has great, you know, size and fullness and roundness to his arms. I think right there, those are better than Chris's. He has a very crazy taper into a very small waist. Normally, Chris exposes a lot of people with his structure and his taper, but this time, in my opinion, Mike's was better than Chris's. Wider lats into a little bit of a smaller waist. And then we go down to the lower body. And I would venture to say that Mike probably has the best quads in classic physique right now. His quads are separated. He has a very pronounced sweep. The development that he has there is next level. And the overall balance upper to lower body is very, very good. And he brought very good conditioning to this show as well. So for me, I actually gave the front double bicep pose to Mike. Oof, all right, all right. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I mean, Chris lost this pose to Mike. Okay, Mike ended up winning this pose. How? Well, let's go body part by body part. So the first thing he says, uh, arms are better on Mike. And sure. Who doesn't have better arm than Chris, you know, as far as the top classic VZ guys? Maybe Urs Kletzinski, but that's about it. Everybody else has better arms than Chris. I mean, that's his weakest body part. They're very, very weak. And the pose is called front double biceps. So, okay, that's a very important thing. And I agree with the arms part. Then he says, Mike has a better V taper. Wider lats and a smaller waist. As far as the smaller waist part, sure, yeah, I can see that. His waist is probably a little bit smaller. But as far as the bigger lats part, I don't know if I agree with that. He does have wider shoulders, but as far as the lats themselves, I kind of think Chris has a little bit thicker lats. But it is very close. And like Mike, I mean, his lats are going like from his shoulders all the way down to his waist. And Chris's lats are a little bit higher inserted. But honestly, I prefer the way Chris's wheat taper flows because of those higher lats. I mean, it's not like they are super high. They are just enough. They're just fine, if you ask me. And you can see more clearly where they begin and where they end. But Mike is wider. I mean, his lats are wider. Are they bigger? Is his wheat taper better? I don't know about that. Now, as far as the X frame, if you look at the legs as well, I think uh, Chris has a better X frame. Now, as far as the legs themselves, Tyler says that Mike had better separation in the legs and that his legs are just bigger, better, more separated and the best legs in the classic physique division. Do I agree with that? I don't think so, man. I mean, maybe his legs are big, but he doesn't have the adductors like Chris. He does not have better separation, I don't know how he saw that. Maybe it was different in person, but I think this video is extremely high quality and you can see it very clearly that Chris has more crispy look to his quads. More separation, drier legs, more round as well. I mean, it is very close, I can see what Tyler is trying to say, but that's not the way I see it. And also because of the height, I just feel like Chris is more impressive in this pose. So, I mean, even though it's a close pose and I can see Mike winning it, I don't think it's that clear and I don't think those arguments um, are, are, are correct, are right. He also says that Chris's legs are down in size, they were bigger last year. I don't think I noticed that. 
Maybe he was a touch flatter, but I don't think his legs are down in size. Would I give this pose to Mike? I mean, I don't think so, but okay, sure, it is very close. And overall, I do like the fact that Tyler is not idolizing Chris, that he is looking at him just as another competitor. Maybe I am biased because it's Chris Bumstead, but I didn't see things exactly the way Tyler described them. I don't know about the lats, I don't know about the weight taper, I don't know about the legs, especially the separation and the size as well, but because of the arms and because of the width in the shoulders and like the difference between the sh shoulder width and the waist size, I mean, sure, I, I can see Mike taking away this pose, but because of the legs, because of the height and the overall structure, I think I would probably rather give it to Chris, but it is very close, I'm sure a lot of you guys will still go with Mike in this pose. All right, now let's hear what Tyler had to say about the side chest pose. The side chest is obviously Chris's strongest pose. Mike hangs in there with him in this department. I think he did enough to hang with Chris in this pose, but still Chris takes this pose just because he's very, very overwhelming in this pose. All right, so he said a couple of other things as well. I don't want to show it to you guys because it's just praising Chris for his strong points. It's not very interesting and he gave this pose to Chris. I agree with that for sure. I mean, the details in arms and like the shoulder to chest separation, the conditioning in the chest, the details in the chest, I mean, and then the lower body, the hamstrings, the glute conditioning, the quad, the pop as well, and just the overall frame and structure. Yeah, Chris is very overwhelming in the side chest pose, so of course he gave him this one. Let's go now to the next pose, which is definitely more interesting, it's the back double bicep. This was the closest pose between these two guys. Upper body wise and back wise, I think Mike had the better back. You saw the thickness, the separation and the detail. Great arms and shoulders here in this pose. Chris's back has obviously improved over the years, but his width was not as good as Mike's. And also, which has always been something that I thought he could improve, which would be the thickness to his back. So upper body wise, Mike takes the lead here. But now we go down into the lower body and Chris has tremendous leg width, tremendous detail through the hamstrings and really great conditioning. I think Mike's conditioning actually might've been just a touch better, but his leg width and the detail and the size to his hamstrings don't really compare that great with Chris's. Overall, this pose was hit a bunch for me. It was really, really a toss up, but at the end of the day, I think you know, when Chris is able to hit the back double correctly, I still barely gave the edge to him. All right, so he gave this one to Chris. This is something I can see for sure. Upper body wise, as far as the back itself, Mike has a better back. And overall, conditioning as well. He was more conditioned than Chris, especially in the glutes, I would say hamstrings and the back itself as well. But again, the same thing like uh, in the front double bicep, the X frame. The size of the legs compared to the waist and then waist to shoulder ratio. That's why I had Chris in the front double and why I have him in the back double as well. But this one is definitely a lot closer. And I already mentioned in my previous videos that uh, Mike is lacking hamstrings. And you can see it especially from behind. Like his glutes are definitely more developed than his hamstrings. And like the adductors as well need to come up, you know, to close that gap between the legs. If he had that this year, if his uh, legs were thicker from behind, he would have beat Chris in this pose. And that would probably mean he would win the whole thing. He would win the competition. But uh, yeah, he's lacking the hamstrings and also width in the legs. And that's why I don't think he has bigger legs than Chris. Maybe it looks otherwise from the front poses with his uh, quad insertions and the shape and the way he's posing with his legs. But are his legs bigger than Chris's? No, no, I don't think so. However, conditioning is better. The back is thicker. So yeah, very, very, very close pose. But yeah, I would give it to Chris as well, because of the structure mainly and the overall X-frame. All right, now let's move on to the abs and thighs pose. For Chris, he's always had good abs, but they could be deeper and blockier for sure. Again, I told you I think his quads were just a little bit downsized from the front this year as well. Now for Mike, we see he has very, very good abs, very symmetrical, very detailed, very separated, good detail all throughout the abdomen, a nice taper flowing into his nice small waist and crazy, crazy quads from the front. So for me, this was a clear pose for Mike to make this two poses to two. 
All right, <laughs> wow, I did not see this coming, I didn't expect Mike to win this many poses and for it to be that close in the bet double bicep, apparently Mike won the abs and thighs pose, he does have better abs, deeper abs, better abs separation, I mean here they're showing Chris's vacuum, but in the actual abs and thighs, Mike does have better abs, now as far as the legs, I mean the way Mike is uh, posing them compared to Chris, I prefer the way Chris is hitting this pose, and also how much Mike is opening up, like in the upper body, the lats, the lats to waist ratio, I definitely prefer Chris, maybe it was different when they, when Chris also hit the abs, flexed the abs and did the abs and thighs instead of the vacuum, but I don't know man, okay, okay, Tyler said abs and thighs was won by Mike, and that's 2-2-2, two to two. guys, he's a tie right now, the classic pose is going to decide who's the winner, and it was extremely close in the back double bicep, as far as Tyler is concerned at least, and he talked to the other judges, they're all talking about it, so it's not just his opinion, it's basically probably the general opinion of the judges, I mean this was posted on MPC News online uh, Instagram page and YouTube, and also on Mr. Olympia LLC Instagram page, so it's not just uh, Tyler himself uh, as a judge or whatever doing reviews of these shows, it's what he thought as the judge, and I'm sure what the other judges uh, saw as well, so it was definitely closer than I thought, now let's check out the last pose, favorite classic pose, as you can imagine, Chris won that one, but uh, let's hear what Tyler has to say. This was a decently close pose, Mike was hitting the front lat spread, I think a very very strong pose for him, for Chris, he was hitting his one arm overhead, one arm front double bicep pose, he does a really good job of showing off his strengths, and we don't really see any weaknesses here, what it's all about for favorite classic pose, and that's why I would give this pose to Chris to make it three poses to two, but overall, extremely close show. All right, so he gave this one to Chris, but this pose is pretty much impossible to judge because everybody's hitting something else, something different. I wonder what would be the outcome if the favorite classic pose was, instead of the classic pose, if we had the, like, uh, front lat spread, you know, as Mike is hitting right here. I mean, if he gave the front double to Mike because of his uh, leg size, leg separation, better V-taper, better arms, would he give this pose to Mike if it was the front lat spread instead of the classic pose? Or if it was one hand behind the back and the other flexing the bicep, which is very similar pose to the front double bicep, I guess Mike would win that one as well. So like Tyler says, it was an extremely close show, I did not think it was this close, and maybe they actually gave it to Chris because of his legacy, maybe they would have judged this show differently if it wasn't Chris. Again, I don't agree with everything Tyler said here, but the way he saw it, and I'm guessing the way the other judges saw it, it was really, really close, Mike almost won, and if he did that, Chris wouldn't even retire on stage, he would have to do it like on Instagram, <laughs> or on his YouTube, I mean, he wouldn't be able to do the, the winner's speech, so, I mean, this was a very, very close call, honestly guys, I am surprised, I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are, so please leave the comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video guys, give it a thumbs up for more content like this guys, stay tuned, subscribe to this channel, thank you guys so much for watching, see you soon, all the best, and bye bye.